everybody, NFT, Metaverse, and even fashion fans. This is another great episode of the DAO Developer Podcast for you. If you're fashion lovers, you especially love this episode because today I'm having Natalie Johnson. She's the fashion tech and founder and CEO of Nuno, and she brings fashion to the Metaverse. And Nuno is the B2B2C platform and a digital fashion marketplace where NFT are sold regarding digital fashion. So, Natalie, it's great to have you on. Thanks for joining our podcast today. Thanks for having me. It's it's really great to be here and to chat with you. I love your smile and I will especially love your personal story. How did you, excellent lady from Great Britain, <laughs> got into the to get into the blockchain space. This is an amazing story. Tell us, please. Yes. Yeah, so I moved into um, fashion tech about five years ago. So I was in England and I was a fashion buyer for many years. And then I moved to Australia and got, you know, worked my way up to be a CEO of a fashion label here. And I managed to get a job in fashion technology in a company that was also a startup. And it was looking at online fitting solutions. So imagine like an online trying room or a virtual, virtual, um, you know, changing rooms in the stores. And I thought this is a fantastic um, offer. And I, I think every website, you know, should have this feature eventually. Um, and it's very complicated tech. You know, there isn't one universal solution out there of this. But part of that solution was digital fashion and having like these beautiful 3D sort of hyper real renders of clothes, which I'd never really seen before. And I thought, wow, digital fashion is, is incredible. The use cases, you know, if I had that when I was a buyer, my job would have been so easy. Um, anyway, I worked there for, for a while and then I just saw uh, an opportunity in what digital fashion can offer the industry. And so I set up a 3D design studio called 3D Road with, um, with a, a, a partner and um, who is very skilled in making these beautiful 3D renders. And we did well. Um, and I just thought, I just wanted a bit more. And I saw this trend of NFTs happening and I saw um, all these huge games like Fortnite and Louis Vuitton, no, Le League of Legends and Louis Vuitton. Um, Fortnite did drops with Travis Scott and Nike, you know, Moschino did The Sims years ago. And I thought, if we can then excite the end consumer about digital fashion and we can, you know, build a, a branded um, consumption of this with fashion games. And I think there's there's really something to that. So I kind of fell into it and pivoted many, many times. And, uh, and here we are. Now I have a company selling fashion NFTs. <laughs> That's great. I see you love what you do. You know, I'm thinking that digital fashion is perhaps the easiest topic to um, to explain to people how uh, the crypto world works because everybody knows what is what is what is fashion in the real world. Everybody wears clothes and so on and so forth. The fashion industry and so on and so forth. And perhaps it works uh, the same the same way in the metaverse. We have avatars. We need to wear them uh, in the fashion clothes. Is very easy. But may you tell us what is from your viewpoint? What is the main difference between fashion in the real world and fashion in the metaverse? Is there any difference and what is it? Well, I mean, conceptually, it can be anything you want in the metaverse. But I think sometimes when we deploy, you know, these spacey or really crazy outfits, it can be a little bit off-putting or potentially just too abstract for normal, you know, people that consume fashion at the moment. And so I think, it works really well when we do to start with sort of mirror digital products with real products because people get it. They're like, okay, I can buy, you know, this particular product in the shop or I can wear it digitally. And I think um, we need to sort of go on a journey with, with the larger audience because, you know, if we jump from A to Z straight away, it's just a bit too hard of a, a headspace to grasp. But the, the metaverse is so free, you know, if you can think it, you can design it. We've seen sneakers that ha have been made with flames and crazy materials you can't even, you know, make in real life. 
but um, I think it works really, really well when um, it's ta- you know it's tangible and it's got it's got digital twins and you know not every single drop should should be like that uniform, but I think it really gets a mass consumption and and, and people understand it wider when they go okay there's a real life sneaker there's a digital version I can wear it on snapchat I can see it and try it on my body and it's sort of a full circle piece um and I also think you know to get wider adoption if we sort of almost could gift on some occasions people are investing maybe in a beautiful um handbag or a very expensive you know piece pair of shoes maybe if they gifted the the digital asset that's a great way to get them you know they're already going to buy the 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 real life one and now let's just further enhance that user experience and get them into into digital personas Um, or you can just drop products in games and you know fit into their environments and that you know their tech specs and it can look quite different to the real world and you're talking to a brand new audience so I think there's sort of two ways you, you could approach it. But I think, yeah, it works well for me at this moment in time when, when we do blend physical and, and the digital. Excellent. Now, the typical questions for all founders. Every project aims to solve uh, any existing market problems, specific market problems. And, you know, also does that. So how did you come up with uh, the idea of you know, or, or in other words, what existing market problems regarding fashion metaverse and human requirements does you know aim to solve? I think you know people are becoming more conscious of their shopping habits and how they consume fashion and everyone you know with Instagram and being publicly out there all the time people want new outfits every time they go out and if we can get you know people excited about wearing digital clothes perhaps in some of the photos where you can't actually see if it's you know a real product or a digital product that's one way of of, you know a problem where people want the latest thing they can't afford it but they want that style Um, so it's almost like a look filters are very popular for you know things on the head or you know different makeup or different looks like that with the face so why not inc- involve the clothes you know I think a real a problem that the gaming world addressed and and you know there's so many headlines of, of, of these but you know g- gamers want cool products they've got avatars they want to customize what they look like in the games and um, some of these games are very gamified they're very junior looking they're quite pixelated they're very fun but they still want cool product some are hyper realistic and very you know luxe and so whichever game people want to digitally flex you know there's um not just cool weapons and things like that they actually want to go and there's a trend in games where they're social games and people actually just go in and they they can hang out like on Fortnite creators island there's no real missions you can just kind of go there to socialize and i think um we're really seeing a, a trend of that, especially with you know new generations. And so the more we have these digital personas, and we'll have several, we'll have different avatars in all the different games we play, um, we're going to want, you know, branded products. And ultimately that's that's what we would like to to address. And if each brand just does this on their own and tackles one tiny part of the problem believe if you work you know and you want to invest in a digital asset you should be able to take that into many different realms not just where that brand wanted you to take the asset like in real life you know you go into the shop you buy the the dress or the t-shirt brand doesn't control where you go you know you you, you've invested and now it's yours to style and wear how you like so i think we want to see a bit of that in the in this digital world okay so you know is very easy to understandable concept b2b to see digital fashion marketplace where digital fashion you know, things such as clothes and so on so forth like in real are sold in the form of nft as i'm not mistaken explain us how you know works in general so we work and we love working with with actual established sort of global brands. So we've done a, a couple of drops with, you know, streetwear brands, luxury fashion, and we want to just do more and more of this. So 
how it works is we drop branded product um, either on our website or with partners' websites or experiences. So we just recently dropped a collection in Decentraland um, and people come, they shop the digital fashion item and depending on what we've agreed with that brand or that particular product, um, we have different utilities. So as I said, the recent one we had, we had a Decentraland wearable so that you could take your, your asset and wear it in that particular game. Um, with another drop, we've got a Snapchat filter because that, that was appropriate for that product. So eventually with every single product you would come you would buy your digital fashion nft you'd start building out your wardrobe with us your digital wardrobe and eventually i would love every single product to be taken you know across entirely the market you know snapchat instagram if you're into social media or all a plethora of games if you're into gaming well you know there are a lot of uh good nft marketplaces in the internet. For example, OpenSea Rivals once for where anybody may create your NFT and sell their NFT in digital arts once for. May we say that Nuno is uh, the specific marketplace just for NFT related close to digital fashion only? Or in other words, you cannot uh, go to uh, Nuno and try to sell your digital art NFT like you will be able to do it on OpenSea. Or what is the difference between, you know, exactly. you know, and other NFT marketplaces, right? Okay, okay. Yes, exactly. Great question. So um, yes, we are a destination for fashion. Um, we say fashion NFT collectibles and digital wearables. So you just said you can't come on and sell your art. We're compute, completely curated. So at the moment on OpenSea or, you know, the other ones, anyone can kind of go and upload um, an NFT and sell it. We at the moment are curated. So that means not anyone can come and upload an item. We work with the brands and we upload, you know, the, the, the product. So we make sure that we're working directly with the brands for, for trust and authenticity. Um, in the future, we would like to open this up, but to start with, we really want to be a very destination site. And um, we also sell anything related to fashion in terms of a collectible, and this might fall in the art um, space. So for example, you know, think of um, fashion publications, like someone like Vogue, you know, they've dabbled in set selling NFTs, and this is something we would absolutely support. Or a beautiful campaign imagery, you know, the fashion um, industry is so synonymous with beautiful visual videos or photography shoots or, you know, front covers. And this is, you know, a huge part of the fashion industry and, and desirable NFTs, I believe. So, Imagine a red carpet look or a famous catwalk moment. I think these would be collectible as well as the clothes that might be on someone in that moment. So we sort of sell two, two different categories as long as it's related to fashion. Excellent. Uh, one of the questions what I would love for you to ask is uh, a couple of months ago, I had a guest from Digital Fashion 2 on our podcast. She was... Adriana Hoppenbrau Pereira, she's the founder of The Fabricant. You may know her, she's from Holland. And uh, let me understand clearly, you are not competitors. They are fashion designers and you are a marketplace for fashion designers, or I am mistaken. Just explain me how are you related because you are from the digital fashion industry from my viewpoint. I mean, I would hope to think, you know, we are sort of colleagues in the market. So what the fabricant have done is I really refer to them as like the OGs of, of, of digital fashion. In 2016, digital fashion was not a thing. And, you know, they really are pioneers and really pushed and, and, and put this whole space on the map. And they've also evolved, you know, and, and they've sold um, NFTs. They were the first people to sell um, the iridescent dress very famously on the blockchain it was like someone paid ten thousand dollars for this, this digital dress but you know they they were the first people to do that um they released a marketplace very interestingly um where it's like creators can come in they've got the bones of, of iconic sort of fashion 
styles, like a dress, but all the components, you and me, Eugene, we could log in and we could go, well, we want this color here on, on the sleeve and this color on, on the body. And you empower the, the community to become sort of fashion designers. Um, so that's what they've currently got at the moment. So it is quite a different headspace, whereas we're bringing the brands. Um, so I would like to think that we're colleagues and we're both sort of tackling different different sides of the market. But, you know, without without them doing their work, you know, companies like ours would have a much harder time in the space. So, yeah. Got it. Got it. Uh, explain us, please. How does the process of creation of that uh, particular NFT, which is sold on, you know, representing a specific digital wearable uh, look like or is it? Is it similar how real uh, fashion design collections are created in the real world or is it different? Yes, it's actually mind blowing. So because I'd had um, a 3D design agency for a while, we did have a good connection of, you know, some, some really talented 3, 3D freelance designers and everything in the real world when you're designing an item it's very similar and it's a lot of work in the computer so I think people see these things and they might think oh it's just it's a bit of animation but for example uh, we were working with a very luxury brand in um, New York and they had a couture dress you know in the atelier this might take a few weeks or you know a month to be hand placing different items on the bodice and sewing them together and tweaking now, it was exactly the same for our team of, team of 3D designers. We need a pattern 3D um, specialist. And what they do is they come, they look at the garment and they literally create this sort of 3D pattern. Then we've got um, texture artists. So if there's a specific texture, especially a knit or something like that, if you want real high class, um, you know, photo realism on your your assets which obviously we do when you zoom in you know imagine the hairs on on, on knits so all of that texture and, and color that's a specific job and then we have you know the 3d sort of designer the ultimate person that sort of comes and sews sews that item together and then once you've got the item you then might need lighting specialists or animators that come and then move the garment um, and do things in the digital world that we can't do in the real real world um, but again if you want music or you want a track there you need to be talking to composers so whatever really is in the real world you do need to mirror that in 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 the computer and I think people don't realize how much skill and um you know talent actually goes into making these 3d renders it's quite it's quite mind-boggling well am i understanding you correctly that uh, perhaps any renowned fashion brand in the real world or maybe any good talented independent designer may collaborate with you know or you are not so open for everybody what is your politics in that Absolutely. Um, I did an AMA yesterday, actually, and a similar question came up. We do want to support all levels of designers and absolutely want to support the next gen uh, of designers that are coming through. And there's even some incredible digital only fashion designers that, that are uh, emerging because it's, it's, it's a relatively new space. They might not have, you know, 100 years heritage like someone like Gucci, but they, they also are very talented in the world they play in. So we, we would like to support all levels. We started with established brands for, you know, credibility and exposure, you know, rather than working with um, smaller designers and smaller audiences, just because we want to get out there and we want this to go mainstream and we want more people to um, be excited about what we're doing. And so that's why we want to leverage, you know, brands, um, that have big audiences because you know it's a win-win for all of us and then we definitely will be supporting up and coming designers as well so um that's the beautiful thing about web3 right is we can we've seen artists you know turn into superstars in this world because the decentralization gives this airtime to to certain creators so it would be completely remiss of us to to ignore the art and, and the talent and, and the individuals that don't have access to huge brand names. So, yeah. 
our guardian. You know, talking about NFT, I have to ask the professional question from the Envelope team. I don't know, are you familiar or not with the concept of so-called wrapped NFTs or WNFTs? If you are not, it's quite simple. I, uh, I'll, I'll explain. Uh, this means that NFT may be used as sort of a magic vault or magic container for any crypto assets. You may put any fungible, non-fungible essence inside there. So NFT becomes more predictable from its uh, contents, its price, and so on and so forth. Uh, any good features may be applied to this NFT. So, uh, and we created the question for you. What do you think of an wrapped NFT purse or back or say a pair of jeans or jacket which holds digital assets inside imit imitating the functions of a pocket we have in a real piece of clothing so you're selling digital wearable where cryptocurrency or couples of years that you are even bitcoin are put inside in the digital pocket and this item is being sold on on the new now uh so this is theoretical concept. How it sounds for you? Would it be useful for a digital fashion? How do you see? Oh, I think it uh, that sounds like an epic idea. I would love that. <laughs> Although if I had a Bitcoin, I'm not sure I'd be putting it in the pocket and giving it to someone else. But <laughs> I love that idea of, of the pockets. And yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? We immediately can grasp that. Um, I think that's the great thing about fashion and the NFT space is it's like, it just makes sense. We all wear clothes, right? So I think, yeah, um, we can take these more um, unique features of, of the blockchain space that, you know, with art and things like that, again, it becomes abstract. I sort of was using that word, whereas with fashion, as you said, we've got pockets, we can wrap it and it becomes, it becomes this really easy, you know, uh, way to understand what, what we're adding on. So, yeah, I love that idea. I think that's very cool. Great, I smile. So who are the core team members behind you know, and whom maybe do you need else or simply saying, are you hiring? And who do you need if you are hiring? <laughs> <laughs> always, always looking for good talent, always looking for good talent. Um, we are a small team commercially on the commercial side, all remote, all over the world. We've got people in America, we've got people in, in Paris and Italy, and we're in Australia at the moment, but we'll be back in Europe for sure. Um, and we definitely would need help, I think, in the marketing space. I think that's probably our, our biggest um, skills gap at the moment. Um, so yeah. If anyone is into marketing and digital fashion and uh, likes what we're doing, please get in touch with us. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great answer. Uh, what is, uh, you know, on its roadmap now, what are your plans for 2022? I think it's such a, it's such a great question. And, our, you know, our roadmap for me is, is, decades long you know what what we're trying to build here is not a quick flip day trading nft um situation we're not a profile picture drop we're not um necessarily got that a community that's like rushing because they identify with this with this image that they can then put as their profile pictures and their avatars and things like that I think it's even more of a challenge for us to build that community because we're building almost the wardrobe for those profile pictures for those avatars and so you know we're, we're very content in being that um a slow burn that long hold you know in two months of being live in market we've dropped two designer branded products from global brands we've partnered with one of the biggest nft communities in the world and i think one of the most um genuine and most beautiful the jed fellas and you know we've got a, a fourth drop coming in june so you know, find me find me other sort of companies that are doing that much activity and you know we're only not even at the first point of our roadmap so we want to be going for many many years we want to be getting thousands of brands think how many cool brands there are in the world you know we want luxury streetwear we want luxury fashion we want next gen designers and you know who knows in the future maybe we do work with with individuals that want to upload things and we become less less curated but 
um, there's so much to do and there's so much opportunity to establish and to actually get where I'd like the company to get. So I feel like we haven't even barely ticked off anything on the roadmap yet. We have a lot to do, but, you know, I think the opportunity there is, is the long-term play and the people that back us at the beginning and, and understand the vision that we're bringing to life are really truly going to, going to be the ones that benefit. So, um, Yes, it's a bit of a different concept because I think at the moment a lot of NFT projects are very quick, they're fast paced, um, they have really, really relatable products because they're art or they're, um, you know, an avatar, whereas with us it's like it's utility, you know, we're building, you know, fashion that, that you can then wear on things, so it's a, it's a different play. Excellent. Talking about the future. How do you see NFT will inevitably have changed our life, our business, and more in general, web-free set of tools, because NFT are the part of that, will change our life in upcoming, let's say, 10 years, your vision? I think it will absolutely revolutionize everything. And I mean this from the, the concept of blockchain, decentralization, web3, NFTs and crypto, the entire movement will change everything. You know, we will be able to have cryptocurrencies. Every single shop that you currently buy in will have accepting, you know, crypto payments. Um, things will hopefully be really decentralized and the, and the passive income that people will be able to generate and, and the the art that I think will be able to be deployed will, will be incredible. I think in 10 years, every single person, you know, that, that, that can access the internet will be having wallets and will be having NFT collections and it will just be a, a very simple, convenient. I think the tech does need to get a little bit more convenient to get that wide stream adopted adoption but I think it'll be very convenient it'll be second nature to us you know our tickets to things will be nfts um, and we'll just have be having these digital online lives these digital online collections of art fashion things <laughs> some of them might have real world twins some of them might be digital only and I think it'll just be this thing we all have like a physical wallet And finally, I hope anyway, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you hope too. And finally, Natalie, what is the best way to follow and to join, you know? So our website is newno, N-E-U-N-O dot I-O. We have all our social links on there. We have Twitter where we're fairly active. We have have a discord channel we sign up to our newsletters we send out beautiful newsletters um, with what we're working on and you know our website has a shop page which has our roadmap it has a, a beautiful list of all the upcoming drops and teasers so you can see what's on the horizon for us um, and that's the best way to keep up with what's going on I'm also on LinkedIn um, I have a bit of a following there so There's many different ways, depending on how you like to access content. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you may find all the links in the description below. So this has been an incredible episode because we try to explain how the web-free set of tools transforms our real world and uses our experience in the real world with fashion clothes. So the humanity is experienced for thousands of years how to where we sound that we are in web free in the metaverse and we need to wear to a <laughs> lot is not changed in that place. So Natalie Johnson, the founder and CEO of Nino, the digital fashion marketplace, and Eugene Creep MC of Envelope has been have, have been with you on this episode. Please like, share, subscribe, stay tuned, join web free and wear the best fashion, digital fashion, when you will be in the metaverse. And everybody, if you will be in the metaverse, we do hope with Natalie. Thank you very much for being with us on the podcast. Stay tuned for the next episodes of the DAO Developed Podcast. Bye-bye.